Ah. Okay, I think... I think that things are work. Yes, things are working. This is good. <laughs> good. Oh, and now it's not going. Great, okay. Things are working. We, we did it. We are live. Hello. We did it. So, yes. Of course, what I know about all of this is very little. And... Of course, then YouTube went and changed all of the streaming settings on me. So now I didn't realize there was a button that I had to press to go live. Didn't used to be that way, but I'm here now, and it's been uh, it's been a long time since I've done one of these. It's I don't know how long it's been, but um, I want to say maybe a year. To, it was a year. It was when I was starting Engine of Metro North, so about a year. Ah. Yes, of course. When is when is the next episode? Well, um I have had some delays in that because I know what I think I'm gonna do, but it wasn't as straightforward as um making a video, so effectively I have to make two episodes to make one, um is what I found out. Because um what I am doing with this um, episode is um, basically I'm making it a two-part episode where because Metro North has so many um, work locomotives that they have rostered at some point in their history um, originally I was just gonna do the GP 35R but then I decided that I would also do the GEB 23-7 the um uh oh i realize there's a problem with the way that i positioned all my things on my other monitor but um yeah i realized that there was also um i realized that i was also going to do the gb 23-7 the alco rs3m and the bl 14 cg i think i have the name of that right we'll see so i realized that i was also going to do that and so now, effectively, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the GEB 23-7 and the U uh, and the Alco RS3M. So basically, everything that Metro North has retired in one episode, and then I'm going to do. Oh, I forgot about the GP8. Oh yeah, the GP8 and GP9. They will be in the first episode. Although, what I've found is that Metro North doesn't actually have a GP8. They only have GP9s. The one GP8 that they have is actually a GP9 is what I think. Uh, I tried to do some research on the GP8 that they rostered, and it's only one, but every time I look it up, people are either getting it confused for a GP9, or it is a GP9. I don't know what to trust exactly, but um, I do know that it is, it is making things a little bit confusing. But right now, I am just talking about stuff. I'm not exactly... Um, playing train simulator, so we'll do a run um, up the Hudson Line, up Poughkeepsie. Yeah, if anyone knows. Oh, yeah, that... Yeah, although they didn't ever really use that one yellow. Um, yeah, I know, I know the one. I know the one you're talking about. Yeah, I know. Um, I know. I don't really... Well, I, I know. Yeah, they have a BL-14 CG. It's a gen set. I gotta use my phone for this. I need to have some way of seeing things other than my other monitor. It's not working. Just watch the stream on my phone as well. Just gotta make sure I mute it. There. Okay. We're good. Put that over there. Uh, cancel that. It's perfect. Okay. So, <laughs> um, I am gonna do the. I don't. The really small yellow Brookville switcher. Nobody really knows anything about it, cause it was. I think Metro North just got them. Yeah, there is a lot. Though there's a lot of info on gen sets. Uh, Coaster Fan 2105 did a really good video on uh, gen sets. Um, but like I said, I'm gonna be doing three other. Er, so to, I'll be doing the Jeeps, the GP35s in that same episode. So even though there isn't really a lot of information specific to the Brookville gen set that Metro North has, um, I think that I'll still be able to make a video out of it. It's going to be the first time where I um, 
group together engines, I guess. I mean, I grouped together the, you know, the M1 and the M3 because there really isn't a lot of differences between the two. And I grouped together the M2, the M4, and the M6 because they're also... And the ACMUs as well. The um, For some strange reason, I can remember details about the um, all the other ones that I did. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. No, but I can remember the details. I can remember the details about other things, just not the ACMU for some reason. Um... But yeah, Engines of Metro North has basically been what my channel has become at this point. Um, I know it's weird, but yeah, because, you know, I used to do rail fanning stuff and all that, and now I just do this. But I'm okay with that. Um, did the game crash? No, we're here. We're alive. <laughs> Hello, everyone's coming in. It's a party. Why is everything so low res and weird? Actually, it's not... That. It doesn't look weird on the stream, but it looks weird for me. Okay. That's weird. It's not... It just looks zoomed in. I'll zoom out a little. That's better, I guess. The color profile also looks a bit weird. And I also have no idea what the audio is. But let's let some people onto our train. Because that would be the right thing to do, I think. I think that's what an engineer would do. Alright, let's set up the engine. Turn on our light, at least. There we go. Make sure that we ever got our cabs. Oh, no, they're on. Uh, AC, yep. Yeah, okay. Alright, I guess they picked them up, but we're not really running with a schedule. Turn on our... No, turn on the headlights. Yes. On the P32 ACDM, it is a K5LA. I have to hold it down. No. Uh, you gonna, gonna go back the other way? Alright, I guess I'll have to do this in the cab. That's fine, though. Right, yes. Alright, let's put it... Let's turn off the brakes and let's head up the Hudson. Um, I don't really have my live stream. This setup sort of dialed, so, um, yeah, I don't really, uh, I don't know how the audio is, so we'll just have to assume that it's good. <laughs> oh, I did install horn add-ons. Oh, that's terrible, though. I am doing okay. Oh yes, I also, yeah, see, I, I keep jumping around a lot between what I'm thinking of talking about, but yes, I will do, I think I'm going to do one video on West of Hudson stuff, just because, it basically, yeah, I think it is fan rail, it's downpack, actually, I forgot that I installed it, and I'm surprised that it's working, because I tried to install it before, and it, it wasn't, but that's not the point. <laughs> um, I also like how they have this down here it's the foot pedal which these units do have but it sounds better than that than that horn i'm just looking at the audio levels to see if you can hear me over the horn and i have no idea if that's true i'm i just picked this because i actually have never completed a trip to poughkeepsie on um penn central 670s um hudson line extension up to uh well, up to Poughkeepsie. Well, it's up to Albany now, actually. I was... I haven't uh, even gotten to Poughkeepsie. Yeah, alright. If we're good, we're good. I just I just want people to tell me, because I have no idea what's going on. I have no idea what you can hear. But, um... And everything seems really low res for some reason. I don't really know why. Um... <laughs> I mean, the frame rate's fine. I mean... When am I going to rail phone again? That is a very good question. It is a question so good that uh, I don't even know. I forgot what my most driven loco is. I, I think it might be the F-59 PHI for some reason. Yes, it is. I would give you an interior, an exterior shot of it right now, but I cannot because... Um... Oh, you did en start editing Engines of Long Island, <laughs> of uh, the LIRR. Here's the question, though. Should we stop at Harlem? Should we, should we stop at Harlem? I don't know. I don't really know what I should do. I don't know if I should start. Alright, let's stop at Harlem, I guess. Oh, nah. Someone else says nah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yes. 
Well, oh yeah, we're heading up to Hudson in this thing. Well, but okay, but the weekday, the week, the weekday trains or the weekday peak trains don't stop at Harlem, but the weekend trains do. So, which what am I doing? I don't know. We can do. I have actually quite a lot of routes uh, in Train Sim. I keep forgetting that I do, though. But I have. Um... All right, can we go sixty now. Nah, we're not stopping first at Beacon. No, no, no. We'll stop. We'll we'll stop at Croton and then everything north. I think, unless we're gonna do a week a week a weekend uh, train where we stop at Harlem, Terrytown, Austin, and then Croton, and then obviously everything north. Don't be sending off the alerter on me. So I think we'll just do a weekend... A weekday run, uh, sorry, up to uh, Croton. Well, up to Poughkeepsie. Stopping, first stop, Croton Harmon. Alright, let's close. Um... About engines of Metro North, obviously, it is going to have to end at some point. You know, the series. Am I in? What mode am I in? I actually didn't check. Oh. We'll just pretend like we were in third rail mode the whole entire time. We'll just pretend like we were in DC mode the whole time. We'll just we'll just pretend. Although for some reason I can still hear the diesel, but even though I put it in DC mode, well oh, I think I have to put it in neutral actually. Is that how that works? I can't remember. I can do triple horn. I can do I can do many things. Come on! I want to get out of I want to get out of DC mode. I want to go back into diesel mode. I always forget how I do. Um, I don't really know how I transition into diesel mode. Ah, uh, sorry, electric mode on this unit. But I do know how to do it on the um, ALP 45 DP, which I actually I saw the veterans um, the veterans unit. No, we're doing a weekday train, I have decided. I think I'm gonna I'm gonna do too many. Oh no, don't go speeding, please. No. Please. Look at that. Hmm. Let's see here. It looks so blurry, but then it focuses again. It's so weird. Why is it doing that? No. <laughs> I guess we'll stop. We have to slow down to 35 anyway after after Harlem, so I think we'll do it. But, you know, I, I don't know if this is a typical conversation for a train crew to have about whether or not they should stop at a station as they're approaching the station. But <laughs> that is the conversation that we are having right now. Yeah, it's just fan rail response. Oh god. Uh, we'll stop, it's actually. It decelerates quite quick. Right, come on now. See, I think you can hit the platform at 40. I think. Why is it so low quality? I don't know. I think my, uh, my PC is actually quite good despite <laughs> the quality of the game. I guess the game decided that it should lower its resolution. But, alright, let's start slowing down. Probably should have done that a little bit sooner, but I think we'll make it. Actually, yeah, I'm pretty confident that it will stop. There we go, look at this, perfect, perfect.
see, you can't even ask for it any better. Well, we haven't stopped yet. Perfect. Nah, this ain't an overshoot. This is in good shoot. All right, doors closed. Yeah, come on now. I know what I'm doing. How dare you doubt me? All right. I think we're good on the bell. If you can't see the trains moving and you walk into it, no one does horn when they're leaving the station. Who does the horn when they leave the station? Oh, that. I plan on going as long as I go. Um, even though I've already been on for 16 minutes exactly, as, as I've said that sentence. Zero dropped frames, though, which is uh, pretty good. I'm just going to go. What? That's a... It's like a two-hour run, though. I don't know if I've... Oh, I was running my valve because, of course, I hit the horn. <laughs> I don't even know if I plan on going all the way to Poughkeepsie. I don't know. If, if, if we decide that we should do something else, then maybe I'll call it at Croton or Be Beacon or something. Well, we're going we're gonna to stop next at Croton. I, do, I have played Train Sim World. I have it as well. Um, but the, the add-ons are so expensive. I've never made it north of Crow. Actually, I have, but I think I was in a Nacella, I think. No, I wasn't. I've driven a Nacella down this, but I have, um, I think I was in a pair of F40s doing, I think, like 110 down the whole route after, um, Sputin Devil. Uh, wait, what? Oh. I forgot that the speed changes to 30 here, but I would have no way of knowing. Unless I have a signal? Oh, I do. Well, I wasn't paying attention. Oh, we're driving on your route. Perfect. Perfect timing that he... <laughs> the next station is Grand Harmon. Yes, and we did just speed past the signal. Alright, PC specs. I have an Intel i5-6500K processor, an Asus Z170A motherboard, a... um. EVGA GeForce GTX 1070 for the win, an EVGA 500 bronze power supply, and my I have a Samsung 850 Evo, and I have a Crucial MX 500. Um, also, I have an N it's an NVMe SSD. I just added that. Uh, well, actually, I didn't just add it. It just feels like I just added it because it was a while. And um. I have an NZXT case, I forget what it is, but, um, yeah, my piece, I don't know why, but I, yes, exactly, his videos are awesome, but, uh, the, um, the, I think the game just decided that, like, my specs should just, like, plump, my, um, my settings should just plummet for some reason, don't, don't really know why. I don't also know why I'm not maxing my throttle to try and get up to speed and get this done, you know, on time, right? Well, I guess we don't have to get it done on time. It's optional. Ah. I don't know. Let's see here. You see, because back when I built my computer, this was, I want to say, well, it was, it was almost four years ago, and that was before, like, um, you know, AMD had, like, unveiled, Ri like, this was just before AMD unveiled, AMD unveiled Ryzen, EMD, yes, EMD makes computers. Well, they do, I guess, for the locomotives, but, well, maybe they contract that out, but, um, yeah, so it was before. Shh. Stupid alerter. I am alert. I am. I am the most alert. 
we're going to Poughkeepsie. We'll we'll see. Um, why is she making weird noise? That's I haven't heard a locomotive make that noise before. But okay, we'll do it anyway. I forget, keep forgetting to sound the horn too as I go through these stations. Is that pillar clipping through? No. <laughs> I have been up to not a whole lot. Um, not a lot, really. I've just... I mean, I've basically been doing nothing because I've been out of school for a month or so now. Almost two months now, actually. And, yeah, I just haven't really been doing anything. Um, you know, going to college eventually. Well, you see now, the Silver Star would never have a P-32 on it anyway. Because it would have a P-40, P-42, or a... Well, actually, it would have a P-32, but not this P-32. The GE P32-8BWH. Yes, good. I'm very good at naming num numbers. I like you just hear the horn switch before. Well, that's my space bar, but there's like a little subtle like hiss. Turn off the bell. Head through University Heights. Oh, I didn't test if that was working. Hmm. Ah, it's not that important. BL20GH. Beyond Croton Harmon, there are grade crossings. Yes. Well, if are you talking about this engine, just in the New Haven Railroad paint, because they're the same. Um... Well, number no, one went to Boston to do a test of the P4 because they needed it to get through Penn Station, but it went to Boston. I had no idea why when I saw the first set of posts. I was like, why is this in Boston? But uh, it, it, it had a good reason to be there, I guess. Oh, uh, you know what we should do? We should go up the old um, Putnam Division. It's right there, isn't it? Yeah, P yeah, 708. I think that was the one that went to, it went up to Boston and then came down the New York to New York. I think it did it on the Lake. Sh no, I don't think it went to Boston on the Lake Shore Limited actually. Oh, the BL20 GH. The BL20 GH. Well. <laughs> I think that Metro North should have just rebuilt some uh, Jeeps for passenger service because that's basically what they asked. That's basically what they asked for. And that's basically what Brookville gave them. It just is unreliable. I mean, they did rebuild it, but um, I haven't heard good things about the quality of the, uh, the rebuild that was. Well, the rebuild might have been done well, it's just unreliable. So. Yeah, I biked there, actually. I tried, um... In Elmsford, there are actually some old, um, tracks still there, and I tried to ride my bike on them, and it didn't go well. Well, I didn't get hurt, but I didn't I didn't exactly achieve riding across a rail on my bike. And, you know, I, I wasn't really concerned about a train coming, since I could see both ends of the, uh, the track. It's... It, I don't... Um, if you're looking for the best DLC... All, well, I wouldn't say all, but I'd say probably 98% of Train Sim DLC is on sale now. So, um, I think, actually, if you don't have it already, the Northeast Corridor from, uh, Penn Station to, uh, to, um, Philadelphia, I think that might be under $10 with the sale. It might actually be under $10 normally, but it's definitely under $10 with the sale, so I'd, I'd suggest checking that out. They connected a gap? Oh, they connected a gap in the trail, I think. I don't know if they paved it, though. They might not have.
Oh yes, <laughs> Brookfield does also have a. I think that what is it using those. I think it's Sunrail that uses those. Although I remember it, it wasn't always. There was a gap in the trail that wasn't paved. Well, trains from unelectrified sections of the New Haven line, the only ones that go direct to Grand Central are the um, the trains that go, not all trains that go up the Danbury branch, just some of them. Um, it's only in the morning and the afternoon, though. But they won't, they won't go local unless there's some uh, electric problem or something, because otherwise... It doesn't really make sense for them to do it, especially, you know, because people that have been on Dan got on the train in Danbury, they've been on the train for almost an hour by the time it gets to the New Haven line. So it doesn't really make sense for them to sit around for another half hour, you know, waiting for everything. Power, come on, let's get to 75 miles an hour. Well, all... Um... I mean... The engine name? Yeah, the BL-20s run shuttles. They run all Metro North... Sh well, not all, because uh, P-32s do run some of them. Um... I don't know. No one's ever been... The People have been into Croton Harmon shops, but not recently. Yeah, I was going to... I don't know what you want. Oh no, my alerter is going off. Uh, well, are you talking about... If you're talking about a... Um, well, are you talking about the P32ACDM, the dual mode, the BL20GH... Shuttle locomotive, the GP thirty five R work locomotive, or the M eight um, EMU. Are you talking about the FL nine? I don't know what is sitting there. I don't really know what you mean. <laughs> I don't know what you're asking me. Is that the that track there? What is that? It's not electrified. Is that like a CSX siding? But that's not the Oak Point link because that's way back over by Highbridge. I don't know. Honestly, freight trains around here don't really do much good. Well, they don't. No, they don't do much good. They're just not popular. Only I've only seen them a handful of times. Um, most of the time it's always after I come back from 4th of July fireworks along the Hudson and I'll see a train. It just, it's happened every single time I've gone to the, um, fireworks along the Hudson, either in Austin, or Tarrytown, or wherever, I've always seen a freight on 4th of July. I don't know why, I just got lucky, I guess. Come on now. Oh wait, we gotta slow down to 50. All right, let's go see the Kawasaki plant. We'll go drive. We'll do a drive-by. See how the M9s are coming along. Oi, that was way too early to take off the brakes. Uh, but we didn't. We didn't derail, so I count that as okay. Come on now. Or, uh, the Kawasaki plant. I think that's this building? Pretty sure about that, anyway. Oh, so that's that would be the Kawasaki M8. Some of them were built right there. Actually. Yeah, it's the M8. is the MU on the New Haven line. And before that, it was the M2, M4, M6. Or M8, yeah. Exactly. I think what Metro North needs is new diesels, though. Because the M3s are reliable. 
and they're not old. Well, they're old, but they were at least... Yeah, G bud. Yes. No, but the the shoreliners and comet twos are a lot older, at least. I mean, you get in here, and it's just like... Hmm. No, not exactly the most modern. See, I don't hate the charger. I don't. But, you no, know, but... The F-125 won't fit. It won't fit into Grand Central, so it won't really work. Um... Well, the SD-40s, they're, they're too much for Metro North. Metro North doesn't need six axle power. They don't. You know, um... It's not really necessary. Well... See, modified gen sets could work as, um, well, what are you, are you talking about them getting, are you talking about new work locomotives, new shuttle locomotives, and new dual modes? Because you'd want, well, shuttle and work locomotives could be the same, but dual modes, you know, they're more complex, so you don't necessarily want to be running them pretty much 90% of the time on shuttles, you know, it's not really worth it. I think C2 Rail is great. I do. Um, I just don't know where those condo uh, those P40s that uh, Condot bought off New Jersey Transit are. I mean, I know they're sitting in Beach Grove, but they've been sitting there for like eight years now, and Amtrak's like, yeah, we'll get around to them. Um, I'm trying to go through chat here. Hold on. Uh, the things that C2 Rail uses, well, which things? The P40s or the... Um, yeah, 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 calm down. I know I have to be at 45 miles an hour. If you just let me get there. Um, I, I think they are Jeeps. They're just not GP35s. They're GP, I don't remember. Yeah, they... They're fine. I mean, they were rebuilt and repainted, obviously. I mean, the New Haven paint scheme is actually... It's great. It looks good, and it's also historic, so that's why I like it. But the... I don't really hate the CT Rail Condot sort of paint scheme that the... That they wear now. I don't I don't hate it. Um... Yeah, the GP... Yes, those. Um, the difference between the GP35R and the BL20GH is the BL20GH has head-on power. The GP35R does not have, um, the GP35R does not have head-on power. Um, they're also less powerful. I think the BL20s are, no, maybe they are the same amount. Maybe they have the same amount of horsepower. I can't remember. But the... The BL20GHs are lower emitting than the GP35s, which is why they operate into Grand Central more regularly. The GP35s do sometimes, but not... Yeah, no, I, li I like Americans' new livery as well. Um, yeah, I heard about the turbocharger failure, and that's why it was sent out to get a rebuild, and then, like... Um, you know, and then they did basically all of them. Metronaut doesn't have any of them. Uh, and, you know, the thing about so many of these pieces of equipment is that they're not made anymore. Like, 
if Metro North wanted GP40s or even more GP35s or you know GP40 HS is or if they want anything I am forgetting the horn you're right um, if they want any of those they'd have to buy them used off another railroad and rebuild them which you know I think what needs to happen with that is um, Metro North should like if Morris and Knudsen developed like a rebuild package for the GP you know GP40 or GP35 or anything like that and then they could just sell them to railroads um, yeah it's 1995 if they could just introduce them to railroads you know I think Metro North would sign up for those but the, the thing is that the BL20 GH is so new that it's like it, it doesn't really make sense you know it's not gonna be an easy pill to swallow to replace them I mean they've only been here since you know they've only been here since 2008 I mean Metro North could go back to just running FL9s <laughs> let's just go back to running FL9s I mean they well Condot sold most of them Metro North scrapped most of them um I the, the it, it doesn't come down to should something be replaced it's do we have money to replace it and should something else be replaced ahead of them I did Amtrak did Amtrak rebuild their P32s I don't know if they did I know they cut the hatches into them and repainted them but I don't remember if they you know modified the engine or any other internals I don't actually know if they did. Can't remember. Oh, they were okay. Um, I don't have the M2 actually. I don't have the M2. I have the M8. I don't have the M2 though. I have the FL9 as well. Seven oh yeah, seven oh five is still. They they have to they have to keep them longer. I like driving the M eight, um, but I think I also I think I like it more than I should because back when, you know, this was before the Hudson line was in train simulator. It was all that I really had to drive for Metro North apart from the P thirty two ACDM. Yes, Cosmopolitans. Um, okay, let's go through this again, because I'm losing track. Yeah, Amtrak will keep the P32 ACDM longer than they will keep the, um, the P40s. I th or P40s and P42s. I think that's true, because I think Amtrak's gonna run long distance with their 75, like their fleet of 75 chargers that they're planning on ordering, or have ordered, whatever. Um... I also, but then I think that if if you know states or regions want to run rail service, I think that they're gonna have to buy their own locomotives now, or lease them or something, rather than run standard Amtrak equipment. Because that's what's happening in the Midwest. It's happened in California. It's happened in um, the you know the Northwest. It hasn't happened in the East though. Like the Down Easter still uses standard Amtrak equipment. And the um, the Empire, well, the Empire Service, State of New York, is actually kind of in a very unique position because Amtrak can't really use um, the uh, Metro. Amtrak can't really use the State of New York owned P32 ACDMs for any other services. So Metro North did kind of luck out there. So that's what I think is going to happen. But I think the State of New York is pretty set on keeping the. P32 ACDMs for now. Um, I don't think they're really going to have the money. And Cuomo is still talking about electrifying the Hudson Line anyway, so they would they wouldn't be used. Well, they might be used north of Albany, but uh, Cuomo is still talking about electrifying the whole Hudson Line. 
it it's it's I think if with that it's not a matter of when it's a matter of if but I think that the if like the when will be probably like 50 years so it's gonna it's gonna be a while I think we shouldn't really hold our breath with these older dual modes um where was I even well the p32-8 bwh is they're they're too tall um, they won't fit into Grand Central. They won't fit down the Northeast Corridor. Oh, Phillips Manor. I do rail fanning here. I did check this out. It is pretty realistic. Um, yeah, they won't use... I mean, if, if Metro North ever did, I don't think they can fit in Grand Central. So if a train ever did need to be rescued out of Grand Central... Or oftentimes what they'll do is they'll run the shuttle set into Grand Central and then have another crew take it up the Hudson to Croton to be, you know, maintained or whatever it needs. Um, 705 is getting repainted, yeah. Seven, 708. I've seen 708 a lot. I think 708 I've seen a lot. Um, I've, I've seen 712 with you, actually, I think. M10. Um, if Apple gets into the railroad industry, like, uh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Um, the Tappensley Walkway. You see, I think the thing about the Tappensley Walkway is it's seven miles long, right? Or is it, it's like six point something. I think. Um, which is, it's committing, you know, if I biked it though, is, oh, it's three miles, right? It's seven, I think it's seven miles round trip. So yeah, if I biked it though, it wouldn't be that bad. Um, do I like the ACS 64? See, the thing is, is that I think the ACS 64 gets, oh, we're driving through Rockefeller right now. This is where I started rail fanning in, in these woods here. Uh, none of those videos are existing on my channels, though. But, let's go look at the scenery across the Hudson. I don't know why, but my computer decided that it should have low quality. Oh, I hit the horn. Um, I think the ACS 64 gets a lot more heat. Why is my horn stuck down? I don't know how that got stuck down, but okay. Um, no, I think uh, the ACS 64 gets a lot more hate because it replaced the AEM 7, which obviously everyone likes, and obviously for good reason, but the AEM 7 was just old and it needed to, it didn't, you know, it was its time and the ACS 64 just happened to take it. The stations along the Hudson are very accurate, but there was... I think the Hudson line was rushed. Like, I remember it was announced, like, three days before it was actually released. And I remember being like, oh, we'll get this in, like, a month or something. And then we just got it pretty much immediately. And I was just like, whoa. Whoa. The scenery is pretty good, though. Like, I mean, I've been here... St I've stared at this apartment building for many hours while I've been rail fanning, just, like, waiting Um, they should make an a they should make an E60 DLC. I mean, I think that an E60 DLC would be great, just because like the Northeast Corridor from um, New York to Philadelphia, I think that's that's pretty good. Like the the time scale of that route will fit in that fits in really really well with um with when the E60 was ran. I don't, it doesn't, it, I mean, I know the Acela also runs on the same route, but, you know, the EMD FL9 also runs on the same route as the P32 ACDM and the M8, which it never actually, well, it ran with the P32 ACDM, but not with the M8, so. I like Silverliners. The Silverliner 5s were a bit of a mess, but, um, yeah, it, it wasn't, uh, you know, I think, I think that the Silverliner family earlier, though, they were pretty good, reliable workhorses. Um, but I just hope that, you know, the Silverliner 5 and maybe Silverliner 6 eventually can do sort of... Because the M7s aren't necessarily bad. They don't have the traditional bud look, and, you know, they're not buds. But, you know, 
I think that they they got it. Um, yeah, I, I did hear about Dovetail Games rejecting SEPTA's, or a SEPTA rejecting Dovetail Games' request, so it would have to be non-licensed, which, um, of course, Dovetail Games did back in the day with um, the racetrack, you know, at Chicago with Metra. They did unlicensed routes and stuff, which I don't really have a problem with. Like, especially when you're talking about running SEPTA along, like, the Northeast Corridor. I don't think, I don't really, like, when I'm sitting here, I can't really tell that this is a Metro North locomotive for a knockoff. Yes, Ossining. Yeah, I bought this the day it came out, too. Um, of course, of course I like, of course I like, um, Silver Line. Wait, what? I like CSX, yes, except I don't get to see any of their freights because they run them at night. Uh, the Shoreliners, I won't do a history of the Shoreliner, but what I will do is I will do an episode of Engines of Metro North on the Shoreliner, even though it's not an engine. I think it, you know, it should fit. I mean, this, this the Silverliner 6 could be bad, it could be good, it, you know. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Ah, yes, trade, the graphics are insane, indeed. <laughs> you gotta interact with the viewers. Oh, I'm speeding as I'm just reading chat. That's great. Eh, no one died, though. It's okay. Yeah, SEPTA, SEPTA routes are... Oh, wait, I need to go down to 40 here. I won't make it, but... <laughs> I did good, okay? Everything's fine. Alright, if I don't overshoot this one, I think we'll be okay. I don't know why I just turned off the bell either. I'm not, but I have no interest in being an engineer in real life unlike you. So, <laughs> I guess I guess it's okay if I overshoot. Alright, let's pick up some peeps. I've been here too, It's it's pretty real. I mean, there's nothing sitting in the yard, obviously, but that's not the point. All right, now we're going into your your new route. Yeah, the I don't know. I'm usually I'm running this game on like high settings or whatever, but I think the game was just like um. I think the game was like, nah. I'm just gonna lower your settings for no reason. And see, now I'm breaking code because I'm using my phone. I, it wasn't that it wasn't real. Like, r it wasn't accurate. It was more like I felt like the route was rushed. Like, the, um... I remember when this route was released, the Amtrak P-32 just had a coupler, like, just sitting underneath the unit, like, right here. Um, but, and it, there was also a couple of floating, like, pedestrian walkways across the, uh, everything's fine. No, there there are also a couple of floating pedestrian walkways across the thing, and I was like, if you just run up this once, like, you'll see that there's, like, just nothing on the left. Like, it wasn't even, like, he was obscured by trees. No, because, see, I haven't had Train Simulator for that long. Like, I think it's only, uh, well, I want to say I've had it since, it was when tw 2018 had just come out when I got it. I've also been here. I shot, um, 449 here, um, probably over a, year, over a year ago now. Weird to think about, but, um, I had shot <laughs> 449 here in this parking lot. Um, right beyond this bridge. Although this bridge isn't what it actually looks like. It's more like solid. Possible electrification. Um, I... What people don't understand when they talk about electrification is it's not... It's not really gonna... Like, I think the electrification of the Danbury line and the Upper Hudson line are gonna not happen for de because of demand for electrified service. I think it's more gonna happen for environmental reasons rather than um, just, like, 
people being like, we need to have every train be a through train, because if Danbury was trying to run, uh, sorry, yeah, if we were trying to run trains on the Danbury branch into Grand Central, there wouldn't be enough demand for more than probably like five or six a day. So, but I think if we were running, you know, electrified, you know, EMU shuttles along there for environmental reasons, that's the only reason why I can really see it. Although on the upper Hudson, there's also like the, um, there is also the speed advantage that electrification will bring because the Hudson line, like back in the New York Central days, I mean, trains would be hitting probably a hundred along the section of track. I mean, I don't know how true that is, but in some places they'd be hitting 110, you know, places where trains can't even break 60 now. Like maybe not here, here the tur curve is a little bit tighter than, you know, I would have expected. Not what I would have expected, but then, you know, for a pro hundred probably. I have no idea why it lacks a door on the rear of the locomotive. I just, I think that it was, I think there might be some electro equipment back here or something. I don't even know. Um, it would, it would eliminate the need to have dual modes on the line. It would. But if the timing is right and Metro North replaces their dual modes, I mean, it would also make the M8 kind of more needed because if the Hudson line does get electrified, it's not getting electrified with third rail. It's getting electrified. <laughs> it's getting electrified with c c ten, uh, catenary because um, it allows for higher speeds and it's just better for like high speed, long distance trains. Um, CSX heavy haul. I never really got into that one. It was just it was like same thing with uh, Norfolk Southern Coal District. It's just like. It was it was a little much, much. It was a little much for me. Um, I have seen the NJT comets in Croton. Yeah, they're like they're supposed to be the new business train. Is there something in the way there? I think there's something in the track there. Hold on. Is there something in the track here? Oh no, it's gone. Hopefully I don't. Yeah, that's okay though. It's supposed to be the new business train, but, um, I don't know how, uh, how soon that's going to happen. I don't really know why the old business train needs to go. I think Train Sim World is good. It's just not, I don't think it was done right. Not like there's anything wrong with, you know, the graphics or whatever, but Train Simulator is famous with um you know it's like it's simulation and i think that that was lost on train some world like even though you know you get to start the locomotive the way an engineer would and all that if you speed in that game there's no like detracting points from you or whatever it doesn't really you know it's sort of like with that game you sort of drive realistically because you know you want to not because the game is sort of rewarding you for it. it like I don't really know why it doesn't have a door I think there could be, see the thing is is that there's also a control stand right in this window here so people can get to the back of the locomotive it could have something to like I don't really know why um, people were just like yeah no I don't think we're gonna we're gonna put oh yeah no the DLC is so much more expensive it re really is much 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 more expensive than um like just normal train sim <laughs> I have to accelerate I slowed down a little bit more there because I was trying to do it outside of the cab didn't really work alright come on now alright break see can we do it yeah we can we got this ish all right that's good enough I don't think all these platforms are made for six cars anyway I think they're only made for five ah no that actually could fit on the platform if I just moved up a little bit mm. are you not letting me pick up passengers here okay why can I not pick up passengers here 
Are you not letting me pick up passengers here? Or maybe I did and I didn't notice. Um, I do the waterway branch. Yes, it's. I think that the waterway branch should be taken. Shouldn't be Metro North's problem anymore. I think that uh, CT Rail should be operating it, just because of it's sort of the like the way that it's operated is it isn't operated like the Danbury branch or you know any other branch line that Metro North runs. It's operated more like the Hartford line on CT Rail. So that's why I think that CT Rail should come in just because it would fit with their sort of operation. Although of course the trains do need to connect, but both are sort of ran by Condot over there, so it would it wouldn't make integration too difficult. But I think that, you know, Condot keeps complaining about lack of equipment and all that stuff, and it's like if they just took it over, you know, then maybe things would be fine. But I don't think Condot has any equipment to do it anyway. Um Yeah, the executives I mean the thing was is that with normal train simulator um if you want to buy every single route in the game it's i think it's like five thousand dollars at this point it's like five thousand dollars to just buy all of the train simulator dlc but nobody buys all the train sim dlc you don't buy every single piece of it because you just buy the ones that are that you would want to drive like I would if you know I would if I could only have two train sim routes I would have the Hudson line and the New Haven line or you know because those are the routes that are most relevant to me I would not own some British some British you know transport corridor because that's not appealing to me um but with train sim world you have so much less choice and, you know, of course the Long Island Railroad is a good route, but it's also, like, at least with, you know, New York to New Haven, you're getting Penn Station, Grand Central, and the route to New Haven from both of those places. With Transom World, you were, I think you were just getting Penn Station to Hicksville, which isn't really that long. And you weren't even getting, you were only getting one piece of equipment in that DLC, and it's just, it wasn't a lot. You know, it like for the amount of money I just remember it, it's like it's you know, and then you do that other branch, but it's just it's not um it's not really what everyone like really wanted from that. Uh, Condot is a homeless beggar, but they're not really begging. They're more like just paying money to operate train services. Like they're operating C T Rail. Of course they don't own the C T Rail track, but they're operating it and I think they've done a good job of making Shoreline East a used service. Same thing with CT Rail. Even though Amtrak already operated the service and CT Rail sort of took over it from Amtrak a little bit, even though Amtrak still does run shuttles along it, you know. It's it's nice. Alright. We're going through Peekskill. I've been to Peekskill. I've sat, I've eaten dinner right across the street from the Peekskill train station. Yeah, Condot does own a lot of old Amtrak. Well, no, they don't own. It's just the P4. Like, I also think that Condot is tied to Amtrak. That's an overshoot. That is that is a little bit of an overshoot. That's a lot worse. That is... Oh, God. I feel like our braking has gotten worse ever since we left the rail territory, but I don't really know why. It also wasn't letting me pick up passengers anyway. I've ate dinner at this restaurant, though. Salt low resolution. Neither did I, as it turns out. I didn't know I was stopping. I was... I don't know if it was a weekend or not when I was here. But, uh, I mean, this was, this was... This was almost a year ago. This was in August of 2019, so coronavirus wasn't a thing. It wasn't, you know... And I got my uh, learner's permit on the other side of this highway at the DMV. Um... So, the, the story with Condot, I think Condot is too tied to Amtrak. 
because Condot, I mean Amtrak is responsible for rebuilding the New Jersey Transit P40s that Condot bought. Um, and they've been working on those for eight years. And the plan was was that those would get rebuilt and then come back to operate Condot services while the P40s that they're currently using would be like the same the same P40s that Condot is using right now would then get rebuilt while the news ex New Jersey Transit P40s would then take over service except those aren't done and part of that rebuilding process was to repaint them into the CT rail paint but that hasn't happened because the engines were never rebuilt that's the problem and it's Amtrak that's taking their sweet time rebuilding those P40s in Beach Grove and Condot's kind of suffering and the engines are suffering because they don't really much paint let's go look at um Indian Point there she is. That's actually what Indian Point looks like, though. I gotta say. That's pretty good. You're missing those two weird brown things, though. Um. The SD40-2. The SD40-2s are great, but as someone said before, I don't think Metro North should get them because they're they're too much. It's like an overachiever. I also, you know what I haven't done on this route? I haven't driven the river sub. That's not the button I meant to press. Stupid. I want this one. Let's go check out the river sub. Ah, uh, yeah. And that is also kind of what this looks like anyway. Yeah, because you have to. Because the thing, that, the other thing about train sim is that if the asset doesn't exist, there isn't really much you can do about it. If the asset, like if the asset doesn't exist, you just kind of gotta find a substitute. I mean, just look over there. It's so beautiful. It's like, um, you know, at least with games like Euro Truck and American Truck Simulator, you can just add assets to the game. Of course, you know, so if there's a certain landmark that you want to add in, you can. But for 90% of the stuff that you'll do when you're modding, the assets that are already in the game will work. But you can add in your own stuff. TrainSim doesn't really have that same flexibility. Yeah, the, the Condot P40s are rusty, including the, I mean, P32 ACDM 203 on Metro North is also not great. I rem Actually, I saw that engine when I was in peak school eating dinner, and I was like, whoa, it's deteriorated real fast. It's Amtrak's fault, though. It's not Condot's fault. Condot wants their P40s that they purchased back, but they're not going to get them. And Condot's like, we got a plan, now we just need to have our engines rebuilt. And Amtrak's like, yeah, we got you. And then they just didn't. Like, the, oh, the, the New York Central livery, like that post from uh, IRideTheHarlemLine.com that I saw. And I was like, whoa, that's a great April Fool's joke. The Master Coaches? I mean, they're fine. I haven't... The thing is, I haven't ridden in them. So, the only <laughs> piece of rail equipment that I've ridden in is an M7 and a Shoreliner or a Comet 2, I don't even know which, probably both at this point, and a and an M3 probably as well. But <laughs> as for, I, mean, I haven't ridden an Amfleet, I haven't ridden Amtrak, I haven't ridden New Jersey Transit, I haven't done any of these things. The only, and I've, I've ridden the subway, I've ridden I've ridden the Green Line on the T, and I've ridden the Pittsburgh Line. I think that... I think that, like, obviously Old Penn Station shouldn't have been demolished, but I understand why. Like, I, I get why it was demolished. Should we stop in Mantu? Because we're, we're kind of... We're running out of time to stop in Mantu if we're going to. Now let's stop. Let's see if I can line up the door of the cab car or wait no line up the door with the first 
locomotive. That's actually going to be a very interesting challenge that I cannot talk during. I can't, you've seen me try and stop at a station and I can't do it. <laughs> so I don't know if I can do it now. Um, probably need a lot more brakes than I think I'm giving it. And then I'll get it down to like 10 and then stop it perfect. Oh, there's someone waiting there too. Now I'm going to use a bit of cheats here and do something an engineer could never do and just stick their whole entire body out of the window. Look at... Yeah, my keyboard is my keyboard is pretty loud. I think it's just that my microphone is sensitive because it isn't as loud. It also won't let me pick anyone up because the whole car can't platform here and Train Sim doesn't like that. So I think we'll just have to assume that I picked them up. And I'm um, sorry, just gotta gotta leave you here. Let's get out of here. My train is not scheduled, but there was someone standing there, okay? And it's a flag stop, so I decided that they should they should get on. But uh, they they flagged me down, and my train was scheduled for them to be a flag stop, but uh, they they couldn't get on due to train simulator issues of. Transim not liking it when whole cars can't platform. <laughs> um, the, uh, I think the tracks are still there. So, you know, if the Waterbury line was supposed to be extended to Thompson or, you know, through Bristol and then on to Hartford, I could see it happening. Um, it's just... Like... I think that people underestimate the difference between a bus and a train. Like when you have a bus, you're not really getting anything out of the like you're not getting convenience because you have to go to the bus stop and you're not getting speed because you still have to deal with traffic. So why not drive if you have a car? But if on a train you don't have to deal with the traffic and you don't have to, you know, and it's a schedule, and it's, you know, because bus on-time performances are right, but it's sort of like the schedule has to change depending upon the time of day. With a train, the, it, the time of day change for a schedule might only be like five minutes. So I think that people are, you know, I think that it will be used, but it won't be, like, popular. You know, if it, because it is a bus right now, north of um, Waterbury. But if they make it a train, I feel like people are like, well, people aren't using the bus. Because most people in that area have a car anyway. So they might as well just drive into Hartford. See, I, I have never been on an MTA bus. Um, at least not that I would remember. <laughs> uh, so... But... Then again, buses do have their purpose. It's just, they're not going to work well for, uh... Yeah, no, the B-Line, the B-Line is, uh, great in Westchester. Yeah, the Sputin Devil derailment only, it did only end in the deaths of four people. It's just, because Metro North doesn't have a lot of that where it's like normally most of the Hudson line you can d like do 80 on of course the speed limit might be 60 but you can do like if you went around some of those corners at 80 you'd probably be fine but if you went around that corner at 80 you would be pretty uh, sideways as we saw in that derailment stop beeping at me I'm alert don't set my brakes. I hit the alerter. Yes, yes, CSX did have a derailment. I think up north. Somewhere. Obviously, it was just a freight car. It wasn't anything bad. Uh. You know, I'll, I'll leave my house, go and catch the CSX. Oh, wait, it's Saturday. Never mind. Can't catch the CSX freight today anyway, even if I wanted to. 
Oh yeah, the 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 Valhalla train crash. I I remember that day. That was a scary day. <laughs> that was a very scary day. Um. Oh, well, I'm coming to this station really hot. Yep, Metro North Engineers platform at 65 miles an hour. Right, right, of course. Of course, why would they not? Why would they not platform at 65 miles an hour? You know, I think I think that there's no one standing on that platform. See, no one, no one there. They don't want the train. They've changed their mind. Um. Oh, right. I forgot that it does this weird split where, like, one track goes through a tunnel and then one track doesn't I forget about this split a garrison there's there's that video of the SPV 2000s going through here and they like snake <laughs> I know the M2 and the M even an M even an M7 or M M2 can't platform at 65 miles an hour um so yeah the Valhalla train crash that was a very scary day um, for me, because I know people that were on that train, um, you know, and Joe was like, you know, that was back when my dad used to come to the city, and he, he ended up actually missing that train, uh, luckily, but of course, people's laziness kept them alive, because they didn't want to walk to the stairs at the front of, at the back of the platform, so they might as well just sit in the back of the train. I could have sworn it was 80, but you know what? Fine, I guess. We'll do 60, because you said so. Yeah, no, the, um... I saw the M7 involved in that crash. I, I caught it as, um, Metro North. I think they scrapped it, or maybe sent it to the NTSB, but I'm pretty sure it was scrapped. It was sitting on a, on a flatbed. Um, as well as a pair of M1s as well that Metro North was also scrapping. Yeah, but you're going to have to make the Harlem Line um, area in that crash. Now that guard, that CSX derailment, yeah, it just... That's why the Oak Point Link was created, because CSX has so many more derailments than it, when it was heading through, like, the Mott Haven Y, it would, like, block everything when a CSX train derailed. And then everyone was like, yeah, no, we're just going to put in the Oak Point link, and then that won't happen anymore. And it didn't. I can stop at Cold Spring. I can do this. Isn't, um... I didn't see the, uh... <laughs> see, as for Engines of the Metro North, I have no scripts written, I have nothing. I have no episodes ready to be uploaded or anything. I'm just kinda like... Yeah, when that when that happened, that was... See, I think the Harlem line, or some of it, not all of it, I've heard, is on uh, New York to New Haven remap, I think. I don't actually know, but, um... Oh, that's great. That's great. I was, like, so confident, and then I took off the break. <laughs> everyone everyone wants engines in Metro North. And like I like and I will make more. I'm I'm gonna release them every three weeks. So next weekend next Friday or sorry, this Friday there will be an episode. I'm releasing them every three weeks. I think I might remake some of them though. Like I think I might remake probably all of them. Except for the VL20GH and the, maybe the FP10, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what I'll do about the FP10. Um, I was in seventh grade when that crash happened, and I remember. I remember where I was when I saw it. Um, see, it trains some World One. That's, uh, yeah. Um. <laughs> Well, now the oh yeah, open open rails is interesting. Never, never really got on that though. I don't even own it. Hey, you bra I'm breaking. Well, I mean, I don't know if um, Metro North engineers would be allowed to live stream while they're driving. I don't know if that. I don't think that would be allowed. Um, 
I mean, I could remake the M7 episode and include the Valhalla train crash, but it's like, um, you know, the Valhalla train crash didn't really do a lot for like, it sort of, it didn't really expose any design flaws in the M7. It was just, it was just kind of like, uh, you know, the third rail basically just went into the car, and you can't really do a lot to protect against a piece of metal piercing through the front of a vehicle at 70 miles an hour-ish. Probably more like 50, but it doesn't really work. And then, you know, the FRA was kind of like, yeah, no, nothing needs to be... Nothing needs to be, um... You know, fireproofed on the inside of the rail car. That's ridiculous. And then, um, yeah. Things did need to be fireproofed. Because then things got on fire. What was a murder-suicide? Um, yeah, no. I know, I know they can't use any personal devices while on duty. I know. I know that. Um, obviously the, uh... I forget what that train crash is known as. It's one that was by LA. It was Metrolink versus Union Pacific freight train coming out of a tunnel. Hopefully there will be no Union Pacific freight train inside of this tunnel. Yeah, no, the, the, the thing is, is that I know when people, yeah, Chatsworth, that's it, that's the one, I forgot, I forgot the name of it, I'm stopping at Breakneck Ridge, um, it was, see, the, like, people try and get into the head of, um, the woman, and I don't know if you really can, like, you can't, she did what she did. You know, I, I don't think it was, like, an attempt to, you know, murder people, obviously, but it's just kind of like, she did what she did. And, um, <laughs> we're stopping at the last store this time, I think. Um, yeah, BNS, oh, it was BNSF. Was it? I could have sworn it was Union, it was, it might have been a BNSF train, but it, I think it was a Union Pacific unit. Still can't pick anyone up, though. Um, yeah, I'm talking about the Chatsworth, Chatsworth crash. I know it was Metrolink, but I thought I could have sworn that it was Union Pacific. I mean, when they were doing the investigation of that accident, you know, they were like, yeah, Metrolink engineer was on their phone. Yeah, that's why I brought that one up. Um... You know, they were like, was the shifter of her car... It was, yeah, it was UP. Um... They were like, was the shifter of her car, like, weird or something? You know, where she pushed it the wrong way and engaged, um, f drive rather than reverse or whatever. I mean... You know, you're saying, you know, she was worried more about damage to her car than, you know, just driving through a plastic gate. I mean, she was on the train tracks and a train was coming. People don't usually do the most logical thing when that happens anyway, so regardless of whether she was worried about her car or not, she kind of freaked out and ended up doing the wrong thing. I mean, grade crossing safety, there's not really much more that can be done about it. Yeah, she just drove, like, she drove forward. I don't know why she just she drove forward. She she should have just like You know no, I know that's what she did. That's what the accident report said. You know, the vehicle behind gave them space gave her space. She could have backed up and the engineer said that if she had just stayed where she was, she honestly would have been fine or maybe just clipped. But uh she ended up driving forward for whatever reason. I think maybe she thought that she was going to, like, drive forward and drive off the track or something. Like, it's... It, like, it doesn't really make... Like, obviously this doesn't make sense, but that's why we're in this situation of this having happened. It doesn't make sense. If everything made sense, you know, we wouldn't be... Ah, oh, stupid alerter. Stop trying to make things safe. Yeah. So, um... 
I mean, yeah, it, it, it doesn't make sense, basically. I just bumped the mic. That was nice. Nah, but it, it doesn't make sense, you know, what she did. But that's why we're in this situation. That's why grade crossing accidents happen, because people do things that don't make sense. Um, but, at, like, I mean, I, obviously I live in this area, and so do you. You know, the amount of railroad crossing, like, education and sort of, like, pressure for safety has sort of gone up because of the accident. So now, like, it's gone through everyone's mind around here, like, if this happens to me, which also people are more aware about making sure, like, when they're in close traffic, not to stop on the gates, onto the tracks. But if that does happen, I am going to do this. And now everyone has at least thought about that. So... I feel like it won't happen again, but, um, they were, yes, they were trying to sue the MTA because I've been to this crossing and what they said was true, but that's not the MTA's problem. Like there were some electrical equipment, like boxes blocking the, her view of the train, but like the gates were down. She knew a train was coming. It's not like it was a shocker when the train came. Or they were, you know, saying they should have put up, hello, Philip. They were saying they should have put up more, like, gates and signs and whatever, but the truth is, is that in this area, grade crossings weren't designed for safety. Am I coming through on the middle? No. I can stop here. But grade crossings weren't designed the safest way. Yeah, the, the engineer was bashed unnecessarily in that. Like, the engineer just, like, hit the brakes, and that's kind of... Like, that's all that they can do. That has been said time and time again. All that the engineer can do in that situation is just hit the brakes and just hope for the best. I mean, yeah, the Long Island Railroad has a lot of crossing accidents. Basically, any railroad that... I'm so bad at this. This is why... Oh, I'm up... Wait, I thought this was Poughkeepsie for a second. I was like, wait, this doesn't look like Poughkeepsie. Now, people sue the MTA. Oh, this door just opened. Now, people sue the MTA for no reason, and sometimes it's a good reason. Yeah, F, F for all of them, honestly. I mean, this is why engineer. I mean, I have no route training on this. I have no training on this route anyway. Even if... I think the doors might... S no, the doors are closed. Um, But yeah, I have no... Tr I've never driven this route before. Yeah, I because the thing is, I drive so many different locomotives with so many different brakes where I'm, like, trying to figure out what this brake's similar to. And when you're coming off, like, an F-59 PHI with Surfliner, or, you know, Surfliner cars, you're like, this brake's a lot faster than that, but how much faster specifically? And you don't really know, so you just kind of have to guess. Yeah, Long Island Railroad has had a lot of uh, crossing accidents. Um, I mean, there was one... I mean, I don't know how long ago, it, well, it wasn't like it was yesterday, but it was, I think it was like maybe almost a year ago now, where it was, there was one train that came through, hit a truck, and then another train came through and then hit the same truck or whatever. And then there was also that crash at Atlantic Terminal, I think, where the, M, the M7 hit the platform. I have a friend of a friend that knows her as well, but, you know, like, when something like this happens, <laughs> you know, yeah, I mean, but Long Island Railroad's also trying to reduce grade crossings, you know, separate them and all that. I mean, when you, you know, when you know someone who caused the death of seven people, like, like, you know, obviously, if it was, like, a shooting or a terrorist attack, like, then it's, you know, like, it was kind of, that was their intention. But when it's someone like this, like, you don't want to put all the blame on them for the family, you know? You don't want them to remember their, you know, mom or whoever that is as... <laughs> yeah, fire, there's... There are fireworks probably outside as well. I mean... People, people are loving fireworks now, I gotta say. People are very happy with fireworks.
I think they're gonna make an M3 DLC just because they made one for the Long Island Railroad and they made the M2. So all that they really need to do is just like chop off the roof of an M2, repaint it, and then get new sounds and like it's done. And then that's another like ten dollars that they can make and it's like good. I mean I don't know how much coronavirus has slowed down um their developments. Cause I actually don't know where um you know where they're based or whatever. But uh that that is probably possible. Why are you want me to go forty five? Are you making me change tracks here? No. Why am I going forty five then? But okay, I guess I'll go forty five. Thirty? Why? Why am I going thirty? Is there another train ahead of me that I actually haven't seen because I'm not doing a I tried to make a train sim scenario. Not route scenario for um this just because I could. You know, because I wanted to do like a career scenario where I would see other trains, but um it didn't end up working because I think I like No. I'm gonna do thirty. It wants me to do thirty, I'll do thirty. Yeah, yeah. See, they're, they're, I think they're ra if they, you know, if they were affected by coronavirus, I think they're ramping things up. I don't know where the M3 was in their works, or if they have multiple offices and like that office was shut down or whatever. But, um, <laughs> I also haven't been doing the Hornet grade crossings. I think the only one I did was Manti. I think that was the only one I did. I think there is one coming up though. Yeah, there's W whistleboard. Oh, they are in the UK. There is a turbo liner in Connecticut. This is true. Um, I mean, the turbo liner was interesting. It's not... The turbo liner was interesting because of the fact that it had a gas turbine engine. I mean, that was why it was interesting, but that's not why railroads really wanted it. You know, a railroad... Amtrak didn't order it because of the turbo line, the gas turbine engine. It had... It, they ordered it because, like, they wanted basically a diesel multiple unit that was sort of like for high speed but we don't really have Are you kidding me 15 you want me to do 15 why why am I doing 15 why is there a red shut up let's do some investigation why is there a red signal you want me to change tracks is there a train is there something? Someone's pulling out of this siding. Which is just covered by trees because it's... But yes. New York... New York owned them. But then they wanted to rebuild them. But then the rebuilt turbiners had air conditioning problems. I think the Dark Sky and Ground are from... Um... Oh yeah, I should check the map. That's actually a good idea. Um, what's this? No, it's a switch. Never mind, that's not a train. Oh, we'll see what happens when I get to the next signal. Um, yeah, they tried to rebuild them, but then the rebuild prob the rebuild turbiners had a problem, and then Amtrak decided that they were just going to use Amfleets because they were cheaper, and then they basically just everything fell apart and lawsuit and everything. So. That's why everything ended up the way it is now. I mean, I think that what we need to do with... No. I want... I know I can disable it. Is it not aligned right? I could have sworn it was aligned. No, it's aligned right. It's not? You can, It wasn't aligned right. I didn't change it, though. Unless I did, but I didn't change it. Fine. I yeah, I could have sworn. Let's just derail my train then. I don't even know. All right, if is that how the target is supposed to look? I don't remember. I'm gonna have to like get out and look at the switch. Oh no, it's aligned correctly. 
we're good. Alright, we'll turn back on the alerter though, because uh, we don't, it doesn't matter anymore. Um. I don't remember what I was talking about. Uh. Oh yeah, what we need to do with Amtrak is we need to have a company that's operating long distance trains and then we need to have a company that's operating intercity trains. Because the only way like the only way that the Northeast Corridor is going to become more useful than it already is is I guess yes higher speed travel will work but it also needs to become cheaper and right now when you travel on the northeast corridor you're funding you know Amtrak's long distance because they're trying to work towards you know their profitability plan which involves basically piggybacking off of the northeast corridor and short distance routes but if we lower prices on the northeast corridor by fifteen dollars that'll leave like ten dollars of your ticket to go towards improving it and then it will also be fifteen dollars cheaper so it's kind of interesting to you know do that where and then you know like i understand that long distance trains are important and integral to our country and we can still have them exist but i think that the government should be paying for those directly rather than people traveling on the northeast corridor and other short distance routes that's what i think should happen because Amtrak's now trying to cut the long distance services. They're not really doing them doing a good job with them. All right. New Hamburg. Oh, we're platform get 60 miles an hour again. That's great. That is perfect. That is what I wanted. 50 miles an hour, 40 miles an hour. Well, now 40 miles an hour 30 miles an hour still 40 now it's like 30 and yeah that's not how anything works but it is how I All right, we just completely overshot it you know I think those people on the platform changed their mind I don't think they want to go to Poughkeepsie <laughs> do you really <laughs> really you think I need more training no I think I, th I think that's good I actually I have seen a Metro North training train and I remember there is this engineer and sh like they brought the train into the platform so slowly I, re I remember that they I think they platformed at maybe 15 miles an hour and I was like huh well <laughs> I know everyone's overshot a platform before but um yeah, I mean everyone's o everyone's overshot a platform before. I just do it all the time. I think I have stopped at fewer stations correctly than I have stations incorrectly. Exactly. You see, now if you don't do it in real life, then everything's fine. Do railroads use Train Simulator as like a training tool? I mean, they could have their own they could have their own like simulator I mean like when you're talking about a simulator like this for training engineers the graphics don't really matter all that really matters is that the physics works properly so engineers know when they slow down oh yeah I actually know I think you're right I think Metro North did shoot their own simulator I think I remember hearing about that I mean, this is a long time ago. I remember the Southern Pacific modified a uh, hydraulic diesel to, like, shoot their own, um... I was in Connecticut a few days ago. I was... I was in Connecticut on Saturday, almost a week ago, actually. Or Sunday, almost a week ago now. But, uh, it feels like it was yesterday. I've, I've spent a lot of time in Connecticut.
mean, hey, engineer is a good, you know, it's a good job, good pay, you know. It's not a bad job. It's, um, the thing that I would be concerned about is, auto like, there are obviously union rules, but if we're talking about autonomous cars, I think that trains are easier to make autonomous. Like, maybe not in yards and everything like that, but if we're talking about, you know, out here, I mean, I'm not even doing anything. I just left it at 100 and let it accelerate and just hit the alerter every few seconds. But, you know, and then the computer will know when to brake. It can judge the conditions based on its last braking attempt or based on the season or whatever. But I think that trains are also not... Yes, and PTC is basically preventing... Well, it won't prevent overshoots, but it will prevent people from going the wrong speed when they shouldn't and passing signals. You're out? Alright, bye. <laughs> Truck Dog 23. I don't even know who that is. See, the thing is, is that, um, if we were gonna have autonomous trains, I mean, it would, it would take a human to train it. Yeah, they, they did. Um, I don't really remember why, though. No, P of course PTC can fail. PTC can fail, although in, like, the UK, I think PTC has been phased out with a newer system, so I think they've had PTC for a lot longer, or something like it. It might not be called PTC, but it's I think it's basically the same. Like, I don't know why they use depowered SPVs and GP40s. Well, that was in... I understand why they use the GP40s, but I don't understand why they used the SPVs because Metro North didn't receive new coaches. All the coaches that they have now, they had then. So then either Metro North got new coaches without telling anyone. Well, no, no, I know why they used the GP40s to replace the FL9s while the BL20 GHs were coming. But they have the same amount of coaches as then as they do now, so... I mean, you can use a GP40 and Shoreliners, unless... The only thing that I can think of is if it had something to do with, like, the contract that Metro North and Condot had. Because the depowered SPVs and the um, GP40s were owned by Condot. So maybe on the Waterbury branch, Metro North had to use Condot equipment until they got their contract updated. Or maybe Metro North changed the contract just so that like they wouldn't have to use FL9s or could redistribute FL9s or something. Like that's really what I can think of. I can't really think of anything else. Oh, there we go. You see, NJOT has a very interesting track record with heritage units. Although, the GP40, the GP40 4100 is it's the same and it's not the same. I think it has different prime mover and different head and power, but I think the the frame is the same and the control stand is the same. But I think and I th where the was the electrical system upgraded on it? I don't even know. Oh right, I need to th slow down. Let's use the brakes. Yeah 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 yeah. yeah. No, no, everything's fine. Okay, you see, we didn't tip over. I know what I'm doing. We're, we're doing this before speed limits were a thing. <laughs> oh, I thought we were not Dundies. We were Dundies. No, 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 no. I think everything, I think everything's fine. Relax. Relax, everything's fine. I, did, I remember when I said I might not make it all the way to Poughkeepsie. I made it all the way to Poughkeepsie. <laughs> it's 
It's been an hour and a half. It's almost 10 o'clock at night. I started this at about 8, so. Oh, we're going 31. No. Bad. Bad. Good. Well, um, can I derail? I think I would have to accelerate to quite a lot farther, like quite a lot faster, but. Alright, bye Christopher. I use an iPhone XS. I had an iPhone 6S before that, and I had that for almost four years. And then I, uh, looks a bit, look, I can't overshoot now. Well, I still can, but I won't. Let's try and get everything on the platform. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. We can do it, 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 we can do it. Come on, stop. Yes! Look at that. That is part. See, look. Look at that. You see, if you try to exit from the window, and you shouldn't, you won't land on the platform. But if you exit from the door, you will. That was perfect. Like, okay, I. What? Why is the platform. But just don't try and get into the cab car. You might. You might die. I did it. See, I stopped at a station. <laughs> Let's see how many times did I sound the horn. Speeding al only 11 times. I mean. <laughs> only 11. Only 11 speeding errors. 70. I drove 72 miles. Um. I mean, we can do something else. Let's see here. I mean, this is page one. This is page two. Sherman Hill. Have I even used this yet? Have I used it? Do I own this? I bought this? When did I buy this? I don't remember. I don't remember buying this, though. That's the thing. I'm very confused. I don't think I own this. <laughs> like, uh. We can do Pacific Surfliner. Uh, let's see. I mean, basically, these are your options. You know, you got North Jersey Coast or Morristown and Coastline. Um. Where's the Surfliner? Am I blind? Pacific Surfliner. There it is. I... No, but I didn't get the 2016 bundle. I don't... I didn't... The first routes that I had were... I had... The routes that I bought Trans Simulator with, I bought Donner Pass, um, Pacific Surfliner and Northeast Corridor, New York to Philly. That was what I bought. Um, I didn't have anything else. Uh, but... I... Maybe they did include it in Sherman Hill, but I don't remember buying Sherman Hill either. I don't know, I don't... No, it's not for sale anymore? Huh. I don't remember buying Sherman Hill though. I don't want to do um, Northeast Corridor just because, like, if I was to do the evening clock, that's a hundred minutes. Um, I don't know if I want to do a hundred minute scenario. Um, let's see. What can I? I could do. Actually, you know what? I think I'll do. Um, I think that I will do F forty PH dash two cat to Bayhead. We do that? Or what's this? 
But this one, this one's triple red. This one's... This one's... This one's only three. But this one's triple red. <laughs> I think I... I think I can handle triple red. <laughs> or quadruple. That's not even triple. That's five bars. That's not triple. No, no. I think... I think I can handle this. I... Oh, wait. Actually, here. You know what we're going to do? We're going to check my settings. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. I don't know. Gameplay. Uh, they do have them as work locomotives. They don't run them in passenger service. So. Worn on English content. I don't know why that's even an option. What does that even mean? If I, I warn you whenever it speaks English? Alright. I don't know why the thing was weird, but let's see if it's weird in this one. I like how this one was done with Penzi Rail Fan. I think this is the narrow gauge Colorado one, right? I think this is that DLC. We shall see what it is. I mean, some of Train Sim's older scenarios have kind of bugged, like uh, the GP40 NJT scenarios. Like, they, uh, there's like, you know, NJT trains where it's like, uh, you know, an ALP45 pulling like high stack, like stacks for some reason. Like, not coaches, it just switches to stacks. I don't know why. You'll be taking a passenger service from Bayhead. Expect a few speed restrictions due to weather and engineering works. Good luck. I think we'll need it. Oh, we're already at Bayhead, except I don't think I can pick up any passengers because of the way the train's positioned. Oh, I can. But I don't think engineers would stop like this. It's, it's like the engine is taking up like half the platform. No, no, I got... Alright, we gotta set up the engine. Hold on. We gotta turn on the wipers. We need those. Um, do we have... Oh, it's enabled. Okay, perfect. We need... Yes, we need those. We need those. We need those. We need... Why is everything glowing? Alright, let's go. Oh, we turn on our headlights. There we go. All right, where is it? Come on, notch eight, let's go. 10 miles an hour. No, oh. Now I didn't. <laughs> oh God. Um, <laughs> I already have sped. And I've only done about 20 feet. I have all of the New Jersey Transit DLCs except for the uh, U30CH because I haven't bought it yet. Oh yes, I forgot about that. I missed. I remember reading your opinion on the HHBA chat and then just never said anything about it. I just messed up that horn too. Shut up. Is it laggy? Why it be laggy? Let me see. For me it looks fine. Huh. Well, I can do 40 miles an hour in a second. I think that's the more scary thing. Uh, 
Um, <laughs> who put this in Penn Station? I want to know. Who put this in Penn Station? Um, HHP8. I think it was good in, uh, like, someone was like, yes, what if we made an Acela, but, like, changed it? And then made it pull regional instead. Like, I guess that it saved money when you were designing it, because you could base it on the Acela, but as there weren't really any other electric locomotives to base it on. But, yeah. Well, is this a quiet zone? I am, right now, I am not doing Metro or Caltrain. I'm about to just go speeding, though. I'm not doing Metro or um, Caltrain. I am doing New Jersey Transit. I've been, I've been in Point Pleasant. I have been here many, many times. Gone rail fending at the station probably six times. I don't even know. But we gotta start slowing down for it because... Shut up. I'm trying to break here. No! I'm trying to break! Why are you putting it in emergency? What did I do? <laughs> this is the North Jersey coastline. I don't know why the alerter is being annoying. Yeah, I know, I know, but I also don't think the Point Pleasant platform is this long. I don't think it is this long. Stop, please. Yes. Perfect. Oh, it would have been perfect. Well, I've also I've seen engineers here though do like interesting things it's not like it's dumb but they'll when they're stopped at the station they'll pull a lot more forward than they need to they'll pull like up to here have the, the engine pretty much blocking the crossing that way people won't drive around it because i've seen people do that i've actually seen a school bus run the red lights here actually um that was an interesting day <laughs> i was with my grandma i was like what are you <laughs> <laughs> we we stopped to wait for the train, and then the school buses just flew through. <laughs> I was like, I like I guess I would expect a car to do that, but when the school bus did it, I was like, ah, that's good. That's what we want. But you know, I've seen engineers pull out very far on that platform just to make sure that people don't, you know drive around. I mean, it's a it's a reasonable thing, though. Yeah, bay, bay head to direct trains. I've seen a lot of those. I think I've... I actually, I think I've only seen one, but I have seen them use one of those sets as a, a, a shuttle, for whatever reason. My headlight's even on. Yeah, but I don't have any ditch lights. Now I only have ditch lights. You know, the SL is still in use. I mean, it's being replaced quite soon. Or, well, really depends on how testing is going with the uh, Acela 2 or Avalia Liberty. Oh, we're on the drawbridge. I was looking down. I shouldn't be doing that, but... I know, I saw the 8 car set as a shuttle, and I was like, this is so stupid, because it doesn't even fit on the platform. <laughs> but, I guess it works. Now we're on the drawbridge. Why am I speeding? What am I doing wrong? You're limiting me to 40, and I'm doing 40. Yeah, usually they're four on uh, New Jersey Transit. I didn't... I, I wish they used the multi-level set, though. 
because I feel like that could have gotten really interesting really fast. Just imagine using like an 8 car multi-level set as a shuttle. Like, that would be, <laughs> that would just be insane. It probably has happened though at some point. It wouldn't surprise me. Well, can't they? I think the the ALP 45s can handle it. Maybe not the PL 42 ACs, but the I'm pretty sure they can pull. It would be a waste, but it would be a calculated waste. Why are you limiting me to 40? I'm limited to 60. Never mind. They're designed for it. I mean, I like how NJT was like, you know, we need we need a P forty two, but not a P forty two. Oh, that's not what I wanted. All right, hopefully, F forties can decelerate a lot faster than I think they can. This one we are gonna put the PL forty two. That's what I meant. Look at that. I mean, come on. Credit where it's due. Although there isn't any platform here. Not even a low-level one. They just stand in the gravel and the ballast. What? It, like, I've seen this station before. And there is a platform here. But I guess in train sim, they don't get a platform. Well, yeah, but people can't go around the train anyway. It's not like I'm doing anything wrong by sitting right on the crossing. Safer. How long am I supposed to be here? Did I arrive here ahead of schedule somehow? I guess I did. I don't really know how though. The stupid bell is really loud though. I like the strobe, so. What? There's a glitch with the LP40 so causing multi level sets. Hmm. Just derailed every time you went around a corner. That would be a very interesting day. You know, I think... <laughs> We're just sitting here, like... We are supposed to be moving in... No, I don't want to release. That's not what I wanted. That's... No? Yes. It said we're supposed to leave at 20 2345. I mean, 47. No, isn't there a, like... Is not is there really not? I could have sworn there was, like, some... Oh, wait, no, because don't you cross the track? I don't even remember. It's been a while since I've seen this station. Come on! <laughs> what is taking so long? Let me leave. Are the doors even open? No. What are we sitting here for then? We're just sitting here just to sit here? Or are we stopped because of those... Like, engineering works that I was told about? Ah, you see? There we go. Look at that. Perfect. Let's get out of here. Yeah, 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 what? What? <laughs> I'm not doing anything wrong. You're limiting me. Okay, you're limiting me to 60. I'm doing 20. Mm. 
that seems weird though I mean because I mean that's just because of where I'm from like like on Metro North every single station is high level platforms like that would never pass around here where you'd have to cross tracks to get to a station like even at Breakneck Ridge where it's like a like it's a flag stop they're like no 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 we gotta build a like bridge over the tracks just so that people can stop well it, it's only the only non high level platforms are Mantu um Breakneck Ridge and Appalachian Trail those are the only non high level platforms no you're forgetting about Ad uh, Appalachian Trail Not, did I say Adirondack Trail? I meant Appalachian Trail what? Nothing. Yeah, they have middle doors, but they can't be used at low levels, but... Even... even th That's not even really the problem, because at every single low-level station, you can just... Op they only open one door anyway. So... Even if the middle doors could access low-level platforms, it wouldn't really help Metro North. Oh, Middletown? Oh, west of Hudson. You're right. I do not have any mods for the NJT uh, F40PH-2 cat. Which seems like a bad idea to have cats running around on a hamster wheel powering your locomotive. But they, I mean, it is just a reskin of the Shoreliners, but that's literally what the Comet 4 is. Or that's actually what the shoreliner is of the Comet 4. They're basically just reskins of each other, just real life. They're not any different. What? The alerter goes off way too often in this thing. Oh, I'm speeding now. That's great. That's good. But we need to start slowing down anyway, so thank you for reminding me. No, no, I don't speed. I'm a good train driver. I'm actually slowing down way too much. Perfect. I can't overshoot it now. Although, am I going to arrive early? Uh, no, I'm not, actually. But then I won't have to sit there for, like, 20 minutes. I wonder what this siding is used for, and I bet that it's absolutely nothing. I don't think this has ever been used for anything. Maybe a ballast train, but I think that's about it. I don't think NJT would ever use it for anything, because it isn't how anything works. Well, yeah, but CSX doesn't even run down here anyway. Or, well, Conrail, actually. Conrail doesn't even run down here. No, NS wouldn't run down. NS doesn't run down here, even though they say that they can. Conrail says they can run trains down here. <laughs> I don't think they would, though. It's nothing, nothing here. Do they really make the platform curve away from the track? Do they really do that. That doesn't. That defeats the whole point. What? The platform here curves away. Why? Just, then just don't put the platform there. Like if you're gonna, if you're gonna put the platform, it should be along the track. Like please watch the gap between the train and the platform. Well, yeah, I guess, but it curves away, right? Or does it not? Maybe I'm just seeing things. I could have sworn it curved away. Maybe it doesn't, but that would be. It looked like it curved away. Yeah, that looks like it's a curve. Could just be the camera angle, but that looks like... It looked like it curved <laughs> I was like, that's the stupidest thing ever. Alright. No, I don't want to release the brakes. I want to go to E-hold. E-hold. Yes, good. No, I know that I know that Conrail accesses the southern secondary um, off the coastline. But don't they get off at Long Branch or just south of it? I don't think they they don't they don't go to Spring Lake. They don't they definitely don't go to like Point Pleasant or Bayhead for sure. Uh, 
I mean, the only reason why the Bayhead train station even exists is because of Bayhead Yard. It doesn't exist for any other reason. Because they would just end the line at Point Pleasant. There doesn't. There's no real reason to end it at Bayhead. There's no park. There's like a parking lot that holds like maybe 30 cars, but 15 of them are New Jersey Transit employees. No, Conrail doesn't own Metro North. Um, Metro North contracted out commuter service to Conrail. Well, actually, the MTA did. But then, um, but they never, they never owned each other. Well, actually, no, the Long Island Railroad, um, was its own thing. The Long Island Railroad never had, what, what, what speed do you want me at? You don't even say, you just say bad. I don't know what I did. What did I do? What does AAP mean? Does that mean red? I mean, Long Island Railroad used to operate freight. Alright, we good now? We good? What did I do? <laughs> Spam acknowledge, it'll be fine. Oh, that means maintenance. Okay, so they're maintaining what? The track? That's not how anything works. This is new. This isn't like some old panel. This is brand new. <laughs> I mean, wait, I heard something change. Well, oh, now it's just a Christmas tree. Everything's lit up. No, I know it's rebuilt. It's not that, like, this new panel that, you know, I'm looking at the speed on is... Ah, ah, we could do 40. Hello, what's up? I can do 40, I swear. What can I do now? Still 40, that's okay though. I could just drive the train like this. Right? It's like, it's train simulator, no one's gonna trespass in front of me. I can just drive looking at this, and this, I guess, as well, because I need to know when I should stop, but... What it what... What do you mean negative nine? I don't even know what that means. It's just saying that I can do 40 miles an hour when I feel like it, and that is right now. I, I can go in reverse. I can go into the cab car if you want. What? You told me I can do 40. Well, actually, you lit it up, so now I can't actually see. All right, bye. No, you lit it up, so now I actually can't see how fast I can go. I mean, if that's not helpful, I don't know what is. Yes, yeah, they do do that. It's... I mean... Oh, now you're telling me I have AAP again, so I gotta slow it down again. Um, I don't know why they took the head and power engines out of these, though. Because it's like if they ever needed to rescue a train, they could with the head and power engine, but then they gotta make sure that it's maintained, I guess. And doing that is too much. Like, I think that's how this works. I don't actually know, but... Yeah, happy Saturday indeed, even though it's been Saturday for almost 24 hours.
Don't some of the jeeps have head in power, though? Not all of them, obviously, because I know some of them have been stripped for work duties. But I'm pretty sure... I don't know why they didn't just leave it on, though. Like, I don't know how much maintenance their head and power generators have, but is it so much where it doesn't make sense to have it? I am not a railroad CEO, and I probably do things that don't make sense, but... It seems like if they ever needed to rescue a train, like, the head and power generator could really earn its keep. Come on, now. See, look, because I'm doing 18 miles an hour, I can, like, not overshoot this platform either. So, I mean, that is just perfect. I cannot see anything wrong with this. No, I don't want to go into emergency. That's not what I wanted. I mean, this whole thing wasn't going to fit on the platform anyway, so... Might as well just not even try. I am blocking the... Uh, the crossing a little bit, but nobody ever said that that was not okay. I gotta watch this live stream though because um, I have no idea what I sound like right now. I have no idea if you can hear me or not. So I'm just trusting all of you that are watching that you can hear me and that everything is a okay because I have no clue. And everything is weird graphically as well on Train Simulator, so I'll see what I can do. Timelessness penalty, but you were the one that limited my speed. But what if, what if the ALP45 has a head and power failure? Then what would they do in that situation? Like, there isn't really much else... I mean, they'd have to send a whole rescue train, which wouldn't be that difficult, but it's sort of like if there's a jeep stored in Bayhead and some, you know, and a train is r about to run a shuttle and the head and power fails for whatever reason. What? Oh. <laughs> huh. 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 <laughs> oh, God. Well, see, I was so used to cab signaling that I kind of forgot that, like, real signals were, like, a thing. <laughs> so I didn't think to look at it because I was just like, yeah, it's cab signal, it'll be fine. <laughs> hmm. All right. I'm going to do one more, but I think I'm going to do a quick one. Like uh Could we do some yard duties? That would be that would be entertaining. What about Aero 3? Uh no, those uh, not really. Oh, wait a minute. We can do we can do dash to the finish. I mean, I think. Okay, look this. See, we all know how well I can stop at platforms, right? And I think that this will just prove how well I can do that. Because if I can do this, I can do anything. I think I can do I can do this. I think it's doing 75 miles an hour and I need to get it stopped. And like... The dynamics on the Dash 8 are also so frustrating because they don't kick in right away. So you've always got to like leave it on the dynamic setting. Negative like 11% just to get it to kick in. I don't know how well I can do... <laughs> I don't know how well I can do this. You're fast approaching Fort Lauderdale and already running late. Your schedule for your scheduled stop at the station. Use your skill and experience to stop swiftly, controllably, and as safely as you can at Fort Lauderdale. Good luck. I can do this. Oh, we're accelerating. 
we are accelerating. We are gonna do this. We are gonna, we are going to stop at the station right now. 66, 67. No, no, but then I'll lose points, you see. You gotta do it right. But see, I actually don't know how fast a dash 8 stops. So I'm gonna leave it in setup. Coast in. Put it in... 60% braking. What? Drive quality! What do you mean? I like the dash eight horn though. Okay, now start using the dynamics. We might be stopping a little bit quickly. Leave it in setup. How about that? I'll leave it in setup. Okay. I think I can do this. No, they want me to be there three minutes ago. We'll do more runs, but I wanted to try this because I know that I can stop at stations really well. So why can't I do this? Can you give me more dynamic breaks yet, please, Mr. Dash 8? No, not that much. Perfect. Look at that. Look at that. Only lost 22 points, slowing that down, and I'm only about four minutes late. But I did do it. The train is stopped in one piece on this platform. The last car is overhanging a little bit, but it's only a baggage car, so... I mean, you can get the baggage. Y y you know, I think we're okay. Yeah, okay, we did it. Okay. Huh. I think the best job for me to do would be... Is, this a, is there a switching? Oak point? I don't want to do oak point switcher. Let's see. I haven't done a lot of scenarios, though. That's also true. Um, is there yard duties in this? Uh, no, I didn't think there was, though. Um, I can't do Sherman Hill. Sherman Hill has so many long runs on it, though. Like 45, 35. It's, well, I was in rail fans, but I don't want to do rail. I can check in rail fanning for all you what I should do. To the max and back. Of rolling brake test. Nah. I don't know if I want to do with that though. Um, Acela. I think there's some Acela scenarios that I haven't done. Um. Mm. I don't like the Acela. Not. I don't like driving it. That's the thing. I don't like it. It's too much. It's like, I just set it at cruise control and just cruise. But, let's see, what routes do we even have for this anyway? We got, what, we got a 50 minute one. What is this room? Wait, what? Hmm. You are picking up passengers at Stanford before continuing southbound for a second pickup at New York Penn. I don't want to do an ambient on the Hudson. That's not... Like, yeah, I guess, but it's only interesting for five minutes when you're like, then the novelty of the M8 on the Hudson is sort of worn off. I can drive the M8 really well, though. I've gotten very comfortable with that. Um, I don't really know why, though, but I, I have gotten very comfortable with the M8. Um...
they're also the the acela like doesn't go that fast along this section anyway. So I mean I've already proved that in my what why was not a dual, there's only well I guess I could do the L P forty five DP, but I don't think I am going to do that right now because I've already launched the Acello. So we're gonna run an Acello from Samford to Penn Station. Now I can stop in Acella pretty well. But I won't have to. I only have to stop at Penn, which is probably the easiest place to stop. <laughs> but the cell, it's so easy to stop at Penn Station because you're already doing 15. So you just stop. And then you're good. I also... Huh. Oh, wait, do I have to stop at Stanford? Why are there ACS-64 sitting in Stanford? No, but why? Oh wait, no. Why are there? Why is there Amtrak equipment sitting in Stamford though? Why? What is it doing here? There's no reason for Amtrak equipment to be sitting in Stamford. So why is there some? That doesn't even make sense. Um, cruise control, handbrake, auto brakes. Um, yeah, let's turn on our tilting can take our corners much. I think the Acela has better acceleration, though. I think that's really what it does um, best. Um, on. On. I want on, yes. I said on. Tim, why are you turning off? There we go. Okay, we gotta start hitting the brakes, though. Did I turn it on? The way TC enabled. Enabled. They're on. No. You just tap it and it goes up to like 99%. And I'm like, no, no, I didn't want 99%. Look at that. That is perfect. You could not ask for it to be any better. Like, look at that. Okay, okay, we're inside of an Amtrak train. But look at that. Let's turn off the bell, reduce braking, and then let's actually see <laughs> why are we... We have headlights now, do we? Oh, whoa, 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 hold on. <laughs> look at all those people. Hmm. Yeah, just sitting here. What do we have our destination display set to? I don't even, well, I guess the only time a cell is really even need destination displays is kind of like, like when they're at Washington, it's just kind of, is this a cell going to Boston or New York? And that's kind of the only time where they need it. I guess, unless someone confused a northbound a cell for a southbound, but I guess that's also the only time that they would be needed, but... I, this is like not what the Acela's bell even sounds like, but like I don't even know where they got it from. <laughs> so to be honest, I don't know anything that's whose bell sounds even remotely like this. But <laughs> it does accelerate pretty fast, though. Oh right, the speed limit isn't seventy yet. I knew that though. I promise that I knew that. I knew that the speed limit wasn't 70 yet. So what time do they think will be there at 18.49? That was too soon. That was way too soon. That was way too soon. That was real, real soon. Uh... I'm just like speeding. I'm. Just, it's like, it's just so much faster than the F40 that I was just driving or the P32 ACDM. It was. It's so much faster. Like I just cough and I'm speeding, and that's not good for me because I speed all the time. It is because there's no reason for them to be there. I mean, not really. 
like unless they're running you know a northeast corridor line train for whatever reason that's the reason why they ever really be there there isn't really any reason for them to this isn't even what they sent the horns does not sound like that either it, it doesn't it's just a k5 la not whatever that is it's it is not the, the uh they're different I know I can't install fan railers mod for everything though <laughs> I can't I can't install his rod for everything <laughs> and how am I passing a regional like what is this regional doing wrong why are you only doing like 40 miles an hour you didn't just stop at a station y y you can you can go faster I meant this one. No, I meant it's this one, right? Yeah. Of course, there's no grade crossing, there, but that's not the point. Of course, every time you just tap, you're like, I want to go to 85. No, 99 or 80. That's all you got. You don't got any more than that. <laughs> it's so stupid. <laughs> Slow and steady. I mean. Slow and study stopping at more stations just barely loses the race. That's what it really is. And the only reason why we're really doing 50 here is just because this bridge can't handle more than that. Now we're going to Florida again, get back up to 70, then get back down to 50, then get back up to 70, then go back down to 50. That's pretty much the name of the game. Well, I'm getting there. I'm getting to New Rochelle as fast as I can, legally. I mean, we could just go 160 and see if we flip over. But I don't know if that's what people want right now. Ah, oh, you watched my MT video. Thank you very much. Very nice of you to watch my video. Someone other than my mom for once. No, the MC won't come back. It's gone. It's it's not coming back. It, it's not really how anything works. <laughs> you know. You know. Funny thing. I've also watched all of Engines of Metro North. Somehow I've also done that. Alright, we gotta go back down to 50. Alright, we're going around 50 because of this curve. Are we in Greenwich? Is this Greenwich? I think this might be Greenwich. Real fan here. Is this train even tilting? I know the power cars don't even tilt, but it doesn't look like anything's tilting anyway. Do you know, I think that the controller in the train simulator universe just like doesn't exist. Why'd I put it in reverse? Why did it let me do this? <laughs> just bump the reverser and it was just like no, there's no M2s in service right now because the M2s, because they were being retired, Metro North didn't fit them with PTC, and so in order to achieve their like PTC initiative, they uh, they just pulled them. I mean, it makes sense, you know. No point in fitting in, you know, fitting M2s with PTC when you're just gonna get rid of them. Because it's it's not worth it. The M3 is obviously because they're not going to be replaced, even if they are going to be replaced with the M9. Well, the M1s, the M1s are gone. The M3s are still in service, though. I think I don't know when Metro North will replace the M3. I think the M3s and the M7s might go at the same time. 
I know that sounds strange, but I can't see any other reason to replace. The only reason why the M3s aren't as good as the M7s are because of the doors. They're double door, like double two-piece two doors. The M7 has a single-piece door. That's really all that you're getting with the M7 that you aren't getting with the M3. So... <coughs> that's a sneeze. That's good. <laughs> um... What? What? What did I do? I know. What? It's just angry at me. I don't know why. What have I done? No. What? What have I done? What have I? What have I done? I'm hitting the knowledge. Wait. Is Q not? Q doesn't do the alerter in the Acela. And now it's engaged reverse again. Q does not do the alerter in the Acela. I did not know that. <laughs> I really did not know that. Um, yeah, the M3... See, back when I... I mean, you have to remember, I said that almost two years ago now. And in that time, Metro North has kind of decided that they're probably not going to get M9s. Because they don't really need them. I don't even know why he's here like when has a csx train ever ran at this hour of the day on the northeast corridor like uh, the you know in the hot line too they make it seem like they're everywhere like they'll just be one idling like just somewhere and it's like nope nope csx doesn't even use that yard anymore or you know Visit the Big Apple. The M9s are on, long, on the Long Island Railroad, yes. But um, the Long Island Railroad needs new units anyway for the um, for Eastside Access. Because if they wanted to run Eastside Access with just their existing fleet, they wouldn't be able to maintain a high enough level of service on the, East, on the Grand Central routes and the Long Island, on the Penn Station. So they needed they need more units anyway, so they might as well replace the M3s. But Metro North doesn't have a need right now for any additional units. So it's not really as necessary for Metro North to replace the M3s as it is for the Long Island Railroad. I don't think I'm gonna make this because I realized that way too late. Um why did the M why were the M4s which higher before M6 before the M2? Well the M2 the M2s were kept around because Metro North had a lot more of them. Um the M4 like the M4s didn't really they didn't replace anything and neither did the M6s. You know, they were just around to, you know, add, you know, when sir when demand on the New Haven line went up, they just added more units so that was why they had the m8 that's why they were retired so because they that's why there were more mts basically the reason why that matters is because when metro north it it doesn't really make sense to roster and r maintain a slightly different fleet of cars when you can just retire all of them and then just maintain the mts because it's it's more ex like that's why SEPTA doesn't, well, obviously they're all tired now, but that's why SEPTA didn't run the, their ALP44 alongside their fleet of M7s much, because it just wasn't worth it for them to maintain a single ALP44. Now, obviously with Metro North, they had a lot more M4s and M6s than just one, but it, it's, it's the same sort of reason. Well, the M7s, I mean, the M7s are already out. They're not going to they're not going to have bar cars. I don't think the M8s are going to have bar cars either. Just because... Not that it doesn't make sense. Bar cars were loved by a lot of commuters. But it's just that now that they're gone, it's one of those things where it's kind of like there isn't enough like, power for them to end up coming back. Well, I know the ALP44 had microprocessor problems. But 
it, the the incentive wasn't there for SEPTA to keep the unit running. And I'm not sure what variant um, SEPTA had of the ALP44 because some of them didn't have the microprocessor problems. I think, I forget what the designations are, but some of them... Well, the M1 isn't in service because it was replaced with the M7 in 2004-ish. I mean, well, it was actually, I think it was replaced in 2012, just because the M7s had a few bugs that needed to be worked out, but now... What, the SEPTA ALP44? Did it really? Just speeding now. It's good. I'm really good at this game. That's interesting. I mean... I... I kind of wanted to go and see, you know, SEPTA's AEM7 farewell, but I, I didn't end up going. Also, this section of track right here, in real life, it's not 80 miles an hour, it's 70. Or maybe, maybe it's 75, but I'm pretty sure it's 70. I think Metro North decided that it wasn't worth it to have trains doing 80, so they just reduced it, because I think it's a whole, I think the difference between 70 and 80 is a whole, like, FRA standard lower of track maintenance, so I think it was, like, Metro North was just like, yeah, let's just do that. No, oh, they did. So that was great. I mean, so Alstom just basically like just gave SEPTA bad um, Norristown new Norristown high speed line units, and then just gave them a bad ALP forty four as well for so they just basically just gave SEPTA a bad deal, I guess. Amtrak never got replacements for what? I'm keeping it below 80 right now. I'm doing a pretty good job. Oh, oh, okay, we got a signal. We got a signal. They want me to do 45. We can do 45. We are doing 45. We are complying with your orders. Hello. No, 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 no. We're we're complying. Okay, calm down. Calm, calm. Yes, there we go. Hello, Holden. Hello, Miles. I'm doing forty-five. I I don't understand what you want from me. <laughs> um, yeah, the SEPTA, yeah, that's what, that's why I said ABB just gave them SEPTA a terrible deal with the Norristown units and then the ALP44M that was supposed to make it all right. Define Metro North video. There will be another end of the Metro North video next week, but... Rail fending videos, uh, I don't even know anymore. Another Acela. We just saw another Acela. So I don't know how frequent Acela service is during the time period that this route exists, but I'd, I'd assume that it's not this frequent. What? Oh, you want me to do 30 now? Okay. I guess we'll do 30. 30, 30, good. No, it's just like it's it's so obnoxious. All right, all right, all right. I hear ya. I hear ya. Okay? Okay? Calm down. <laughs> when is the next Well, the next the next engine of Metro North will be all of Metro North's retired work locomotives. So that's the Alco RS3M, the GEB 23-7, and the um GP9. 
those those three will be what I will be doing um, next. That'll be like Metro North's Retired Work Locomotives Part 1, which will be released Friday. Yes, I am saying that now, so I better release it on Friday. <laughs> Gotta start writing the script. Uh, we'll see how much information's out there. I'm still, I've tried to do some, like, preliminary research, you know, into, um, into it. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's sort of gonna be like the FP10, where I didn't really know much, you know, there wasn't really much information out there, but I was still able to make a, I'd say, decent video about it. And then I'll do, um, Work Locomotives Part 2, where I'll do the, BL4, BL14 CG and the GP35R, which the GP35 for rebuilds, so that's even more, That's those are going to have quite a lot of information. The BL14 CG isn't going to have as much. I don't know why I'm, oh wait, I'm doing 30, I forgot. I always forget what speed I'm doing. Bye. No, but uh, I always forget. Uh, so, yeah, they, they, they're going to they're gonna be interesting. I mean, I'll see what I can come up with. No real guarantees, though. And now they're making me do 30 miles an hour through here, which is just fine and dandy. Yes! The M2, well, the M2s were and weren't better. It, it depends on what you wanted from it. If you wanted a historic unit, the M8 just wasn't historic, obviously. It was replacing the M2, but, and I'm speeding again. Oh, that's good. No, but uh, the, the M8 isn't worse than the M2. It's just that people don't understand. Like, the M2, it was just their time to go. They'd been in service since 1970... Six, nineteen, no, it might have been nineteen seventy-two. Was I think? I don't even know. Uh, I'm trying to guess on the date, and that's not going well in my brain. Um, but yeah, no, it's like nineteen seventy-two or something. That was when the M2s were first, you know, introduced, and you know, you, there's not a lot of equipment nowadays that can run for that long. So you can't really blame the M2s for you know going away. I guess. Am I going to make a switch back? No, oh, okay. At least this one makes sense. Oh, right, because we're approaching New Rochelle. Ah. I see we are. We already approached New Rochelle. We've flown through New... Oh, this is New Rochelle Station. We made it. We're in New Rochelle. Oh, in the Hellgate line, we can do 100. Look at that. Well, the M2s were made by Bud, who went bankrupt in 1990-ish. So the company that made the M2 is bankrupt. Metro-North then found a new company to make them, but then they were like, wait, but the M2 is also really old. I mean, why buy more of an old thing when you can make something new? Because what you have to remember is that this is all... Everything is politics. You see, if you buy more M2s to people that don't know anything about trains, which is most people, they're not going to know that this is a brand new thing that their governor bought for them. You know, and will make their commute better, right? They want their commute to be better, but if they're riding around on old M2s, it doesn't feel better to them. But when they get onto a new M8, it's like, oh... You know, there. You know, our current governor or whoever is investing in commuter rail, and now I feel like I support them more. 
but it's also that people would have a better opinion of Metro North if they bought it. It's it's not even just the politics thing. It's just people feel better about it. So why not? You know. Now we're gonna go 100 miles an hour. Look at that. <laughs> the M5? Nobody knows. Um, but what I've heard is that when I said that Bud went bankrupt in 1990, Metro North might have, um, Metro North put out, you know, a replacement for the M1, and they were going to call it the M5, and then Bud started working on it, but then, um, Bud ultimately went bankrupt and then couldn't make the M5, so then, basically... They just ended up going to Bombardier and calling it the M7, I guess. I think they just decided that they should skip it. And yeah, you can say that the M8s are safe. That is true. They they survived a crash. I mean... Alright. How amazing would it be if I flew around this corner at 100 miles an hour? What's ahead? I want to know if I can do 100. Miles an hour. Can I do 100 miles an hour down there? Hmm. The M5 is a bus, that's true. Can I do 100 mile an hour around this corner here? It seems like it's a challenge for me to do 100 miles an hour around this corner. It seems, it seems like I could do 100 mile an hour around this corner right here. Well, mm, let's find out just how much we tilt in the 3 cam. Actually, go. I'll watch it like this. Because if we do derail, this is this is gonna be intense. But I feel like we're doing some research for Amtrak here. Because if you know, if the Acela can go around this corner at 113 miles an hour, why don't we just implement this in regular service? I don't really see the problem here. See, we ain't even close to derailing. We're doing 120 now. Oh, another CSX. The New Haven, the New Haven trains do stop at New Rochelle, just not the Acellos, but um, most locals. And I don't know about expresses, but New Haven line trains do stop at New Rochelle. Obviously, not all of them, because some run express or, you know, whatever. But they're not running. You know, they're not going to stop. No, I don't want to save progress. Get get out of here. Get out. Get out. All right, we got this. <laughs> 135 mile an hour around a six mile an hour curve. It's possible, Amtrak. I think you're just being too safe. Amtrak does stop at New Rochelle, just not all. Um, the most regionals do. The Acellas don't, though, um, because they're you know. Amtrak basically just doesn't want to add time to the Acela trips. So they just don't stop it at a lot of stations. I mean, it's simple. If the train doesn't stop at a lot of stations, then it doesn't take as long. It's a it's a very simple math problem. So, yeah, I mean, rather than upgrading tracks, you know, we're just going to just not stop at as many as stations. I mean, it's it seems foolproof enough to me. And now we're, we're running at 149 mile an hour around a 70 mile an hour curve. I think this one might be the end of it, though, this 55 mile an hour curve right here. Or actually, this might just be a bridge. So then I think we could actually floor it over this bridge. But this is what I'm talking about along the Northeast Corridor. Just this bridge, right? It's limited to 55 mile an hour. No real good reason about that. Well, maybe that corner <laughs> that I didn't see. Or this corner that I did see but chose to ignore. Well, New Rochelle, it's not about saving money because Amtrak, like, 
they're stopping regionals there. They do still need to pay, you know, station upkeep. I don't even know what this section of 7 mile an hour track does. It basically just means that trains can accelerate a tiny, tiny bit for that little bit of track. Like, I don't even understand that. That doesn't even make sense. We're doing research for Amtrak here. It's like, why doesn't Amtrak run trains under 50 miles an hour along this section of track? If it works in Train Simulator, it'll work in real life, right? I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how things work, right? Right? I'm pretty sure. Why would it not work that way? I don't really have any reason to believe that it wouldn't. Although I think we're uh, coming into uh, Penn Station now. We're actually flying over Hellgate right now. I don't really understand how we are looking at a bridge. Like, we go over that bridge in the distance there. Doesn't... Like... We are going over this bridge, but we're looking at it like instead of building right over Randall's Island, baseball fields, and soccer fields, whatever, we're going the long way around. Which I guess makes sense. So, do you want me to do another live stream in the near future? Because I would not be against it. It's just, you know, I was thinking about making a channel update, and then I was kind of like, mm, I think I'll just do a live stream. And now I'm here doing a live stream. The two doors are classic, but they're also, they're prone to failures. That's really what it is. Oh. Well. Huh. Really, you think? No, no, I think, I think it's fine. I think it was more than just a constant tilt. Huh. Oh. Well, you know... <laughs> See, this is what happens when I get tired. I'm just like, you know what, we'll just cruise around like, you know, like that, I guess. <laughs> I mean, look, I've, I've done. I think I'll do another live stream just because it's really nice to just talk to people um, and whatever. You know, tell people what's going on with the channel and whatever, you know, answer your questions. You know, a lot of people want to know when the next episode of Engines of Metro North will come out. These are things, because, you know, I don't have access to the YouTube community tab yet. I'm too, you know, my channel isn't big enough. I would love to make a post on there and actually be like, hey, you know, the, the next episode's coming out in, you know, a, a week or whatever. Yeah, exactly. The doors, the doors, the M2s and M3s and M1s failed so often that they just were like, "We'll just make them one door, and then it'll be fine." So yeah, I've been live for just under three hours <laughs> at this moment, and I think that is just about as much as I can manage. But I hope that you enjoyed every minute of these three hours that you were here. I certainly did. And you know, if you have any other questions, just please. Do it now, because then I'm going to end the live stream, and then you're not going to know your answer. <laughs> but <laughs> one door is big. One door is big. This is true. And my conditioner's turned back on. Perfect. Um, but yeah, it's been three hours. I hope, you know, if I do another live stream, I hope that you and more people will show up because they're always very fun for me and uh m2 and m3 are basically the same yeah so uh yeah i hope hope you enjoyed it i might you know i might have a bit more of a plan to do it and i also get to see you know how my live stream turned out because i can't really you know i've just been sitting here i have no idea the audio could be terrible i don't even know so I'm also looking forward to see that, and uh, yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next live stream and the next video and whatever I do next. So thank you guys for watching, and got Alt Tab out. You goodbye. <laughs>